My name is Shema Clinton. I come from Rivera High School. It's so exciting because I didn't know before about robots. But for now, um, I'm trying to cope up with myself and moving up because when we began this, I had no idea about how to program anything or to code, things of that kind. But right now, you can code some things, put them in a robot and load them, and the robot will be able to make some things I want. What are the biggest challenges you still have to make a Yeah, the challenge is that here, when the claw moves down, like resembles sort of digging, it cracks itself. So we're trying to fix that problem such that when it moves down, moves up again. Like a person is digging. In how many minutes do you hope you will make it? In about five minutes, we'll be done. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Fix it. My name is Nessa Asumta. I'm coming from College Center in Arikas in Gisagara district. Our robot is a um, special task is uh, to, to, to sense where there is a hole. A hole will be made by that robot. This, uh, this robot uh, this is a touch sensor. Will, will detect where there is a hole and then after detecting where there is a hole, after um, uh, this robot will put a seed in that hole. These are Ijeanne Zambeula. I'm from Collège Saint-André. I'm with my colleague Noëlla from École des Sciences d'Aguiseigne. Um, together we have constructed a robot. This robot of ours will be assisting in agriculture. Uh, it will be solving the problem of, of low skilled labor, of, of low techniques of, of agriculture. Uh, this robot of ours will be working, uh, it's, not yet, it's not yet finished, but as long as it is finished, we have these features which, which will be plugged in these tiny holes here. And as the robot will be moving either forward or backward, uh, these features on the wheels will be making some holes in the ground. Those holes will be holding the seeds. Like this is our first robot, there is, there is another robot that will be plugging in the soil. Uh, some seeds. That's a robot can. That's what a robot will be doing in short. People in Rwanda depend on agriculture, yet the yield is, is still small. So we've come up with an idea of contributing to improving and increasing the, the yield. So it was very hard actually. So we started from this part, only this part. We assembled everything. This, we assembled the motors, the wheels, and then the, this, the sensors. The sensors, because we have many sensors, the, the ultrasonic sensor that will be sensing the, the object and then the color sensor to sense which fruit to, to harvest, because once harvesting we'll be using this, this thing. Well, it's not well done yet, but then it will be moving up and down, because the trees have fruits at the top and then at the bottom, so to be moving up and down, picking them up, so we need the, a color sensor to sense. For example, if we're going to get like mangoes, to sense that this mango is ripe, it is maybe yellow, and then the green one is not ripe, so leave it. My name is Shirez Divin. This is Danny. He's one. He's good at presenting so much and uh, about assembling stuff. This is Sam, who's very good at programming, and this is Orse. And Orse knows knows so much about assembling stuff also. And then this is Julien who has many ideas in mind. And this is Lina. Lina is good at assembling and programming and everything. And this is and this is um what's your name? Nicole. And Nicole is good at designing and drawing. So she helps us to get this thing designed in everything that's cool and attractive. One thing I always remember that then is that they're so funny. We always split up everything as you see here. There's so much disorder and we don't give up because I can assure you that from the morning we've done many things, assembled and reassembled and put, trust them away but then we don't give up. So once you do something, you like get more trouble forgetting what you want finally but then we don't give up. That's one thing that I've learned from them. I mentioned this before, don't hold back. Any question you have, these are our uh, commenter. <laughs> so, don't hold back. Uh, ask all the questions you have. Everything you're doing here, 
Uh, back of the guys, you know, at the biggest bank, the best bank in the country. <laughs> and one of the best in the region. Uh, so they have a lot to share with you. So whatever you might be wondering with all the work you've been working on, you know, how does the robot that you're working on is going to impact the economy of the country, for instance, and how does that translate to the banking industry? Or any other question you might have. We have about 10 minutes. You have invested a lot in the education of robotics in schools, especially in this program. How will you be able to um, invest in actual robotics in the real world? Are there plans like for people who have learned, as in for people who have attended this camp, they come to them to <coughs> somewhere else? Are there other plans for them to add on what they've learned today to keep on making great and bigger things? You see, we are here about like 40 people, but we think that after this camp, we are, all of us, we are going to go back to our schools. And we are not going to see these materials again so that we can continue. And you don't want this to be like ending by here. You want other people to know it. Then how are we going to tell people you can make such things like this and this without these materials? So I think like instead of people like uh, going to other countries to study this, maybe like why not do more camps here and maybe do a robotic school in Rwanda that can be teaching more about this. Many people get to know about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, at, at the bank, we would love to find one such a school because we know it would be very popular. Going by uh, what the good things are supposed to say, it's very popular. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if business is not striving, uh, banks and you know, financial uh, companies will not strive. So what we want is really uh, to build the workforce of the future, people who've going, who are going to in, you know, invent or to apply new technologies to solve local problems. And when they solve local problems, it's always a big business uh, opportunity for us to finance and then again, you know, make money, etc. So we really uh, want to support ourselves by supporting these young people, making them curious about new technologies. And eventually we hope that we'll harvest in a few years when they come back to the workforce or when they become entrepreneurs, we'll be solving uh, uh, local problems to support our economy. Rwanda is a unique African country. I mean, Africa as a continent has a lot of different challenges. Um, a lot of countries suffer from what most of us would agree is bad leadership. And Rwanda is very unique in the fact that it has some of the best leadership, I think, in the world. And it shows um, in how quickly things improve here, how quickly things are done. Uh, you know, I've done this program for three years in Nigeria. After the last program, we ran into some challenges because of the economy. Um, companies and individuals and leaders, they didn't really want to take initiative on this program and other similar programs that I had proposed. Um, you know, when I came to Rwanda, I had actually, at the time, um, I was visiting with family and at the time I was actually more focused on my agricultural business, um, although I still had proposals for this education business. Um, I met with uh, the CEO of BK, uh, re related to some other matters, and just mentioned that this is something that I do. And in that moment, you took great interest in that because the bank at the time, and Dion specifically, um, was very concerned with investing in the future and you know, getting kids into technology, having Rwanda develop its own um, human capital as it relates to IT. And I mentioned this program and she was so excited about it and she asked for a proposal. So early in 2017, I submitted my proposal and through the rest of that year, uh, we were talking back and forth about how to make this program happen. And finally it happened. Agriculture is a very critical sector for, for this economy. We believe there's still a huge untapped potential in agriculture because uh, across the board when you look at current yields and potential, potential yields for all crops, there's a big gap that can be covered. And we believe using new technologies will help us cover the gap and increase the productivity in agriculture which will have spillover effects on all sectors on, of the economy, including industry, transport services. So if agriculture, we get agriculture well, and uh, we solve problems in agriculture, it's going to unleash a lot of potential uh, on, in our economy. So we're teaching them to be engineers, problem solvers, um, who can solve problems um, that affect any sector, not just agriculture. Um, this, this, this camp just focuses on agriculture, but if you gave them a challenge um, related to construction, they could also design robots um, that can address construction challenges. So these kids, they're creative problem solvers. Whatever challenge you present them with, they'll come up with a solution. The reason I chose agriculture is because I believe that in Africa today, even though tech is great, agriculture and commodities is really where we need to focus because our population is growing really fast, but it's still relatively undereducated. And then most of the jobs are still in agriculture. And then our agricultural practice as is today across the continent is nowhere near where it needs to be in terms of efficiency. Our use of irrigation, fertilizer, technologies, etc., to increase our yield, um, it, it isn't where it needs to be. And I think for the next 10 years, we'll, we'll still be needing to make more and more progress in order to keep pace with um, our population growth. And there's so much money, so much wealth in agriculture that we haven't tapped yet as a continent. So for Rwanda, I see a small country, right, with, that may be land challenged, um, but I really do believe that Rwanda could still make use of the land that it has to feed its people and feed the neighboring countries, despite the fact that there's limited land and most of it is hilly. I think the key is going to be technology. And if you get young people thinking about the technologies that will be necessary, right, to, you know, the machines they'll need to invent to till up a hillside or to irrigate a hill, you know, these are things that Rwandans themselves can start to think about invent technology that no one else has ever invented because they don't have the unique challenges that Rwanda has. Anything is possible. I think once you plant the seed in the kids, give them the next five, ten years, and they'll produce precisely the types of technologies Rwanda needs to tap into its full potential in the agricultural sector, and that will change the country.